Welcome to ABCD EFG News. My name is Edgar Vatino. Our top stories include Barack Obama resigning after a huge scandal. But definitely more important, the Galapagos. And I must introduce our dear friend, Steve, Steven, Stevenson, more commonly known as the Big Triple. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Edgar. Um. Well, I'm here to talk about the Galapagos, and should we start off with the geography? Perfect. All right. So, um, I I have learned a bit about the Galapagos, and I I know that you know they're volcanoes. But could you expand on that idea a little? Bit? Well, first of all, the Galapagos were actually formed by vol oh. by volcanoes. Many of them are not active because of the geological conveyor belt, which moves the islands one inch eastward every year due to seafloor spreading. But some of them on the more westward islands, like Fernandino and Isabella, have many active volcanoes, including Volcano, Volcano Sierra Negro, and Volcano Darwin. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, other Galapagos, I believe that there are highlands, but there are also uh, the lowlands, which are more right. rocky and with less vegetation. Could you? Uh, the lo give me the an lowlands idea obviously have more less vegetation, less, ve less vegetation, and more are more rocky because they're closer to the sea and get battered by hurricanes and stuff like that that pass over the Galapagos. The highlands are a completely different story. They're basically like the jungle. It's impossible to go through because of the dense, ve dense vegetation, and it almost it looks completely different from the lowlands. Oh, uh, that's very interesting. Obviously, the Galapagos is in an ocean, so could you just give us a brief explanation on well, where the Well, the Galapagos ocean is... is located 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador um, in the Pacific Ocean, and the equator runs right through the Galapagos, cutting it in half. It's extremely hot there, I see. Yeah. Yes. Um, you already explained the vegetation of the highlands and the lowlands, so let's skip to um, Porta Ayaro. What is that? Well, Porta Ayaro is the main town in the Galapagos, home to 20,000 of the 30,000 people who live in the Galapagos. A low population because in order to become a resident of the Galapagos, you must marry someone who is already living on the Galapagos. Oh, that that's tough. Um, but there are I, there are twelve main islands. I believe. Yeah, there are twelve main islands, which include uh, North Seymour, Isabella, Fernandina, Genovisa, or Tower Island. Right, those. And there's many other smaller islands, including Delfinus Major, Delfinus Minor, and Sombrero Chino. Oh, thank you. Um, and we will be right back after a short break and word from our sponsors. I asked my friend Dan to see whether he could notice an improvement in the air quality after spraying our new Febrez Mango. Now, Dan, would you mind closing your eyes? I would not mind at all, sir. Not a copy of Febreze. She is the most fluent Latin speaker in the world. Ascendere arboris. He wishes to run in the fields. Ego, curo, in agro, waldo. He's very coordinated. Oh! Oh! oh. I don't usually buy Latin textbooks, but when I do, I prefer Eke Romani 1. Valete di Schipoli. Welcome back to ABCD EFG News. And now back to our original programming, our nine minute special on the Galapagos Islands. And we are back. Uh, my friend, Steve Steven Stevenson. Um, so, can we talk about a little bit about the uh, history of the sure, Galapagos? Sure. So, who was it discovered by? Well, the Galapagos were discovered in 1534 by the Bishop of Panama. when He, he was sailing for Europe, but he got blown off course by a series of tropical storms and hurricanes. Pretty big off course. But when he landed, he saw the Galapagos in the dry season, which is not a pretty sight. 
All he saw for miles around were rocks and volcanoes, and he could not find any fresh water to drink. In fact, he called it a hell on earth. For years after that, no one visited the islands Was because he had, sped, uh, he had spread a bad reputation for uh, them. That's, that's too bad. It, it's a beautiful place. For me. It's not Later, on September 16th, 1835, Charles Darwin's ship, the Beagle, landed in the Galapagos for a final stop before their, their destination back in Europe after mapping the whole entire world. Darwin, only 26 at the time, was a young naturalist. While there, at first he saw what the Bishop of Panama thought it was, but later he realized the true beauty of the islands. He collected many samples of animals, rocks, and minerals. And later, while on the boat, he developed his theory, his theory of evolution, which is one of the most well-known theories in the whole world today. Also, in 1854, he published his book, The Origin of Species. And, and what's, that, what's that book about? Well, it just explains how and why life came to Earth and includes much of his research on the Galapagos. Oh, yes, I, I, I've seen that book, yeah. and it, there's a few chapters on the Galapagos. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very famous. Very interesting book. And so now, next, we will be right back with the wildlife of the Galapagos. I am the all-powerful Karate Dan! You've, you've all heard of Karate Dan, but have you heard of the new Karate Dan Learn at Home DVD? Buy it today! I got my black belt in just 30 seconds with Karate Dan's Learn at Home DVD. Buy yours today! Shut up! On December 3rd, experience the thrill of Tarzan. <laughs> He's madly in love with trees. He sleeps on a bed of vines. And he has animal companions that sometimes annoy him. He's a stealthy hunter. Rated R by the Motion Pictures Association of America. Welcome back to ABCD EFG News. Before we start our wildlife section, Steve Steve Stevenson will interview a recent tourist to the Galapagos, John Marshall. And here we are with John Marshall, who recently visited the Galapagos. When you visited the Galapagos, did he, I heard you saw many types of wildlife and sea life. What types of sea life did you see? I saw many great types of sea life, but my favorite by far had to be the parrotfish. The parrotfish are very interesting. My personal favorite, though, is the sea lion. Did you see any of those? Yes, I saw many sea lions and fur seals. I like the fur seals, too. And now, on to the birds. Did you see any Darwin's finches or mockingbirds, perhaps? Yes, I did see some, both of those, and I saw a blue-footed booby. Oh, the blue-footed boobies. Those are quite interesting, just their vibrant blue feet. And while there's not as many of them, did you see any land animals? Yes, I saw a, a marine iguana and a land iguana, but I did not get a chance to see the world-famous tortoise. Oh, that's too bad. But it sounds like you had an excellent trip. Thank you for your time, John, and have a great day. And now, back to our regular programming on the Galapagos, with Edgar Bettino as the host. And now back to ABCD EFG News with our program on the Galapagos. Now, after our, after our special interview with recent tourist John Marshall, we are back to our regular program and the wildlife section. Hello, Steve. Hello. Um, well, let's start off with the sea life of the Galapagos, as John explained before. There are many types of fish, sharks, sea lions, fur seals, whales, whale sharks, and many types of rays, including eagle rays and manta rays. Could you um, name some of the special fish that you saw? Well, when, while doing my research in the Galapagos, I saw many types of fish. There's a huge variety in the Galapagos. Well, I, I saw angelfish, king angelfish, 
parrotfish, and Mexican hogfish. Or more commonly known as steamer hogfish. Yes. Um, well, also in the Galapagos are many types of birds, including finches, cormorants, flightless, and regular cormorants. These flightless cormorants dive down in the water and retrieve their food. Yes, I've heard about that. Mm -hmm. Also, one of the more one of the most interesting animals in the Galapagos, the boobies. The red footed boobies, the blue footed boobies, and the Nazca boobies are all main tourist attractions in the Galapagos. Yes, I saw some when I went there. That's yeah. Um, these blue feet are especially helpful while mating because they attract the females to them. Yes. Also, one of the also a famous uh, bird in the Galapagos is the Galapagos penguin, the smallest of all penguins. They swim in the water very fast, also one of the fastest of the penguins, zipping around, catching small fish as their food. Um, did you happen to see um, any mockingbirds there? Oh yes, mockingbirds are very common in the Galapagos and are, fact, are in fact the birds that Darwin used to conduct his research in the Galapagos. Uh, and that and write his book, The Origin of Species, as I explained before. That is true. So, I understand in the Galapagos, sadly... Oh, one more bird! The male frigate bird. Very interesting. Oh, the male frigate birds. One of the most interesting birds that I have seen in my whole career. Well, probably the most interesting characteristic is their mating. The males puff up their chest. They puff up their bright red chest to attract females. I've heard that the redder the chest is, the more attracted they are. Of the yes, the and more, the more puffed up yes. the chest is. Mm -hmm. And when the female comes to accept the call of the male, the female rests her head on the inflated pouch. Okay, so I've heard, uh, I said before, there's not many land animals, but there are some. Did you see some? Yeah, there are a few land animals, including the land iguanas and marine iguanas, who dive down into the water to retrieve their food, which is the algae growing on the rocks below, and then they return to the surface to warm up in the hot sun on the equator. There are also probably the most famous tourist attraction in the one of the most famous tour, ho, famous tourist attractions in the world are the giant tortoises. These giant tortoises reach up to be 600 pounds. They are sometimes even called half-ton tanks. They also eat up to 10 pounds of grass per day. Wow, that is an absurd amount. It is. All this wildlife in the Galapagos would not have survived without the help of the Galapagos National Park Service, which you're not allowed to get within two meters of the animals, or you're supposed not. You're supposed not to. But many people do, which has endangered the, some of the species of wildlife, including the mangrove finch. Yes. Um, you're also not allowed to take anything like rocks out of the national park, um, and you're not allowed to touch the animals, or you're not supposed to touch the rocks, but I guess you can't really help it because you're touching them with your feet. But, yes, that concludes our special Galapagos um, program with Steve Steven Stevenson. Well, I, ha I have to thank you, Edgar. It was oh, a pleasure being here. It was a pleasure for you to be here. Uh, Steven. All right, so, and now we conclude our ABCDEFT newscast.